Well, welcome to the Stone Roadie Podcast. It's the one you don't want to miss. It stars Craig Reed, the Stone Roadie, and Griff, the Rocket Scientist. Let's not forget Kathy Godsey and all the old friends that come along. Lord, we'll be a talking skinner and leave you with a song. Podcast 97, action. All righty then, looky here, looky here. It's podcast 97 of the Stoned Roadie Show. And my name's Craig Reed, a.k.a. the Stoned Roadie. And this is my co-host, the rocket scientist, Griff Martin. And uh, what are we going to talk about this week, Griff? We don't, I didn't do no green screen this, this week. I, we didn't, we don't have no uh, new donations. I got a, I got my buddy uh, Don and Marsha, the fellow that sent me the uh, quiver we talked about last week. He sent me from Colorado. He's been on vacation. He said he put a check in the, for a thousand dollars in the mail same time they put the quiver uh, the quiver in the mail, but uh, haven't seen the check that I, like, yet. I guess it it got lost in the mail, but uh, we're gonna wait a couple of days. He said he'd send another one. So, uh, <clears throat> but until then, we'll uh, we'll uh, just uh, negate from the green screen and the donation board and uh, get back to it when we get some more donations. Of course, those are. Those donations are to- totally uh, voluntary. We're not. We're not. Uh, we're not uh, kind of advertising for any donations or begging anybody for donations. Those are totally voluntary, and they always have been. So, uh, what are we going to talk about this week, here, Griff? Well, uh, Craig. Speaking of the uh, mail, um, recently I sent out a couple T-shirts, and they got lost in the mail, and I had to file a claim. And the U.S. Post Office, when you file a claim, they want to send you down a rabbit hole that you're just going to throw your hands up and go, I give up. But they didn't run into Griff Martin yet because I don't give up on that kind of stuff. So I've been pestering them. I'm all the way up to the Postmaster General now. But uh, what's kind of cool, uh, well, you're speaking of donations. Um, <clears throat> so I, I'll sell some T-shirts, and it kind of pays for my gas and, and my lodging for uh, On the Road with Griff Martin. And, you know, I haven't done a lot of On the Road with Griff Martin, but I'm getting ready to start up again. But, uh, yeah, our nemesis, Jimmy Slicker, he kind of pulled a uh, fast one. And and he uh, he, you know, he's our nemesis, but yet, he tried to buy a t-shirt from me under a different name. <laughs> he likes my t-shirts. <laughs> so yeah, we're going to, we're going to talk a little bit about, uh, what happened there at the, uh, <clears throat> at the event with, uh, the six gun in Kingsport at the, uh, Lake view Marina. Uh, yeah, you know, we're a little bit disappointed in that auto, aren't we, uh, Craig? <laughs> well, well, he's had a, a month to work on that and he's been, He's been through three different phones that, that that I know of, and I keep I keep trying to express my thoughts that we can't you do this on a phone. We're going to have to get a regular camera that's got streaming capabilities. But my son Chad, he seems to think that iPhone 14 is the the optimum device to do this on. So. He talked automotive into going to get an iPhone 14. And uh, uh, for some reason, we don't want to get too technical about, about this, but for some of you people that don't, don't understand, but those doggone phones, they want to they shoot in portrait, which is kind of like this way. You'll see people that'll, that you'll see people that'll hold their phones sideways. And then, and then when they put the pic, the, the the video up on on uh, post post the video, the video's, video's sideways. When you watch it, you gotta watch it like this. So, you know, it's, it's, it's so uh, you know we want to get it in in what they call landscape, which is wide, <laughs> like me and Griff screens are are in, in landscape and portraits, kind of the other way. And most 
most uh, cell phones, when you do video, they want to do it in portrait. And that's, you know, really not the way you want to do it. And, and if you notice when auto automotive was doing it, we, we, we checked and we had it in landscape, but then when he went back and went live, it all, it wanted to do it in portrait. And then he didn't have his settings or he said, he said he couldn't find the settings for the, for the sound. And every time the sound got it was loud it clipped and cut out and it, and it wasn't it wasn't good so i just po po posted on there that yeah automotive with a with a test of the uh the streaming and it's a bad sound <laughs> but uh yeah but uh laura uh zach's mom she 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 did she did what one on uh on TikTok, but you know it was it was in portrait too because she's using a uh, an iPad or something, and it's doing it in portrait too. So, but so I found a camera to that, that'll work with it. And Chad's gone. No, we don't need a camera. We need a we need a a, 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 a splitter. You know that'll run four cameras. And it'll it'll take care of all that. But you know he he's he's talking about you know uh, equipment that you know somebody's gonna have to go in and spend an hour or two to go in and set up all that stuff you know i want something that's all in one where i can just go into a place and you know go in and do a live stream and just pull out a camera and do a live stream and he's he's got this thing he wants to set up a, a mixer to set up at the board and then run then run multiple cameras with Wi-Fi and all this stuff, you know. So yeah, we'll we'll do we'll do that once we figure the first thing out. Baby steps, you know. But uh, yeah, it killed me. Uh, automotive come back and said, "Well, why don't we just do this, uh, uh, record it, and then just uh, uh, and then just uh, uh, you know edit it and then do it that way?" I said, "Well." Griff Griff did that with On the Road with Griff Martin three four mo months ago or whatever. I said you and Chad are the ones that came up with the the idea to do everything live. So you when this COVID mess came down, you could do live concerts, you know. And I said, heck, we were doing we were doing the record thing uh, you know, six months ago. You you know. <laughs> So uh, anyway, so yeah, that's that's about all I know about that. But well, uh, I think I think Otto was a little flustered because the day before he he was you know Zach lives up in the mountains and and he took a wrong turn and he went down some banjo playing trail and uh, and and ran it and, and ran off a cliff and his car was hanging off the edge of the cliff and he called nine one one because because he saw a. <laughs> a hunting dog out there and he thought deliverance was going to be coming after him a so, bloodhound he said you know yeah. what you see you, get, you know what's next after you see a bloodhound <laughs> so, so i'm trying to get a hold of the 911 call so we can play it on the stone roadie show oh he said he was backed up and his front <laughs> wheel was four foot off the ground <laughs> Yeah, so he was. He said he's looking at his GPS, and and Chad uh, Zach's dad said, "Yeah, it, it's a little bit of a rough road." But he said he got back in there, and you couldn't turn around. And he said he backed up for about a quarter of a mile, still couldn't get turned around. <laughs> but they were they were close to Zach's house, right? And so he called him on the phone, and and Laura came out, Zach's mom, and. And they said, yell for Laura. And he goes, I'm afraid to yell because if I do, they're, these these hillbillies are going to kill me. And they said, I didn't know a hillbilly is going to kill you. Just start yelling. And so so they had to to track him down by voice. He was he was screaming out loud and they were walking to the to the screams. So, yeah. so that auto he's a character you know he, he's, he's definitely well, chad, a character. We, we can't make fun of him totally because chad basically did the same thing he got his gps yeah. sent him down the, the same road but he did he didn't quite, quite go back as far as auto did <laughs> chad called me up and said you and auto are a lot alike i told you not to eat that gummy my dad gave you and you did that and i told auto not to go down lady gap road or whatever the heck the name of that road was that uh 
auto went down. So yeah, that was, uh, that was some colorful stuff, but well, you know, Craig, Craig and I, we don't really care. You know, we're, we're, we're figuring this thing out as we go. And so once we get it figured out, it'll be pretty cool that, you know, that we can do live stuff and, uh, and bring it right to you. And then when you're, when you're sitting at home and you can't go anywhere because of the COVID, you can watch the stone roadie show. It'll be the only thing on TV. That'll be any good. So, but he did do a couple of tests on it, you know, to, to see if it would work. And this happens every time. <laughs> Hello. Hi. <laughs> I'm right in the middle of a doing a podcast. We did it early so I could come at four thirty. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm right in the middle of doing a podcast right now. Okay, well, even if you could come you know, a little bit earlier, four o'clock. Even. Yeah, as soon as we as soon as we finish this up, I'll be on my way. Okay, thank you. Okay, bye bye. Oh, so they bumped you up earlier, huh? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I hey, can actually bur- hear. That that's Murphy's law, you know. If anything right. can go wrong, it will. That's, I'm, you, I'm, you, I'm that's your haircut, in Murphy's Lawville. That's for a haircut. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I got a class reunion this this Friday. I want to look look spiffy, you know. Yeah, really. Craig has has actually been fasting for two weeks, so he can be the thinnest guy there. Two weeks, my God, it's been longer than that. But ain't been a total fast, but. Uh, I've been living on two eggs for about two months. <laughs> haven't lost any weight. But you hadn't gained any. No, <laughs> haven't lost any. But, you know, I, I, I noticed I'm getting uh, tighter, you know. Yeah. Well, then the other thing we were going to talk about is, uh, and I went ahead and officially made the announcement that um, Joey Davis uh, the, uh, Oliver Anthony guitar player. That's the guy that, you know, plays with Oliver, uh, Oliver Anthony. Um, uh, and, uh, he's going to come on the podcast. I'm supposed to talk to him Monday and, um, and we're, yeah, he's definitely coming on the podcast. Uh, and then we're going to start working on, uh, on, uh, Oliver Anthony next. So yeah, one guy he, he on Facebook, when, when are you going to get Oliver Anthony on? And I'm like, you know, what, 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 you know, what, why don't you call him and, and ask him to come on? Because if you think it's so easy, <laughs> I mean, we're lucky we got, you know, uh, Joey Davis, uh, which is really great that we got, you know, Oliver Anthony's guitar player. So, yeah, so. well, I saw, I saw, you know, when he started posting those songs, you know, I was, I was going, man, this guy's talented. So I was, you know, you know, kind of promoting him and reposting these songs. And one of my Facebook friends, Jimmy, uh, he he wrote me. He goes, "Man, those guys are friends of mine." You know, I go, "No way!" You know, yeah. yeah and uh, so I, I I thought, you know, that'd be real cool if we could uh, somehow get them on the on the Stone Roadie some show sometime. And he goes, "Well, that's highly possible because they're they're both Leonard Skinner fans." As and um matter of fact um oliver so he goes by uh he uh redone a couple of leonard skinner songs and there and i think he's working on re- redoing another one now with uh some other uh bigger band uh more notarized but uh go, go ahead here we go again <laughs> <laughs> hello Oh, you guys know when I'm doing a podcast, this phone never stops ringing. I'm right in the middle of doing a podcast. Yeah, yeah it's, it's Wednesday. Yeah, it's Wednesday. I'm always doing a podcast at 3 o'clock on Wednesday. And everybody... <laughs> Bye-bye. <laughs> See, that's why they call you, Craig, is so they can hear themselves on the podcast. Oh, yeah. yeah, I know. Yeah, that's the way it is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah so we got joey davis coming on we're not sure when um uh, i'm gonna uh, talk to him monday and and we're kind of like in talks maybe i can do an on the road with griff martin go hang out at, at his house his piece of property and you know walk around and 
and just see what he does during a day, you know, a day in the life of Oliver Anthony. So, so we're, we're going to work on yeah, that. You, yeah. You were telling, you were telling me that the, the scuttlebutt is that, that they're both making like $40,000 a day or something or for something I, like I, that. I, 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 I don't know. On, That's the on, rumor. Uh, yeah. On uh, what is it? iTunes are making four four thousand dollars a day or forty thousand dollars a day or something like that on on iTunes. But I guess it's it's all digital money at this point. I guess. Yeah, you know they. Uh, uh, who knows, man? Those guys. Yeah. I mean, they're they're so popular right now that who knows what the real amount is. But uh, but you know, it's great. It's great just, music. He just did that thing with Joe Rogan. I think we're we're pretty special to get it, get him right after Joe Rogan. Heck, that one thing they did with uh, Fox News, that one guy with Griff. When I posted it, I go, <laughs> I yeah. got one news guy. His name's Griff, and I posted. I said Griff went and did a, a live thing with, with Oliver. Yeah, but uh, yeah, he had to go. He actually had to go there. I guess. They yeah, just got back that. actually from Joe Rogan. Yeah. I guess everybody's seen the Joe Rogan thing. So, uh, pretty good. Yeah. Pretty good. Joe Rogan. But, uh, yeah, so that's some exciting news. And then, uh, the other thing too is, um, Craig, and, uh, this is an exclusive here on the stone roadie <laughs> show. Craig just found another reel of the Craig Reed lost reels, eight millimeter <laughs> reels. What's on that reel, Craig? This is the stuff of uh, of uh, Dean and I at uh, the Lambton Castle. Dean and I went and stayed with with Lady Lambton at, at, at just me and Dean and Lady Lambton went and stayed at one of the other castles, and I kind of videotaped the whole thing. And it's and uh, there's all kind of really cool stuff there. There was a there's a haunted. Uh, there was a there's a haunted room and then there's a room where uh, in these castles where people go to die where people go to die and there's just all kind of amazing paintings and 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 uh, real knights and uh, and uh, 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 armor armor uh, you know where the, in the castles where you see the armor statue the knights and shit you know the armor things that you know the real ones uh, all kind of really cool stuff you know this this is a this is where uh the the painting that the, the lamptons they have the lord lampton he was actually blue boy yeah blue uh, boy that's yeah. the one where where you and uh Gary were drinking wine and you knocked the wine bottle over. No, and- that was, uh, we, we went there and had a party and, uh, and, uh, yeah, there was a, we were all drinking wine and there was a bottle of wine that got knocked over <laughs> and pouring down the wall next to this, <laughs> next to blue boy, the next to blue boy. Uh, yeah, yeah. A yeah. priceless they, painting. They they lamped and got a little bit upset it. about about that episode <laughs> and then you and gary uh, i think didn't they have like uh some kind of like a uh a, a lions roaming loose out in the in a fenced in area outside the castle and well it, Ar- artemis got a little bit intoxicated and went out when it was out running around with the lions and we teamed up in teams and went out and me and gary teamed up together and we're all we're all out looking for artemis with 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 the with the lions yeah i remember going gary you know this is kind of <laughs> exceeds my pay level i'm not amused <laughs> but didn't you say that as long as you could outrun gary that you felt yeah i said that's what i told him i said yeah but as long as i got i can outrun you i'm not real concerned <laughs> so these films that you have is it just you and dean kilpatrick or is anybody else in there no or just you- me and dean and lady lampton yeah but uh i i you know what it's a um 
it looks like about 20 minutes something like that it's a uh, 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 film i i i it's uh, i forget what all is on there you know, to tell you the it's been this, this is never before, before seen right never before yeah, seen. no 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 one besides myself has ever seen it and i haven't seen it for it's still on the film i have to take it down and get it get it uh, uh, transposed to uh to dvd or you know digital you know and then so we'll, may, maybe we'll have we'll, that we'll, for the we'll, next podcast. yeah we'll pull some we'll pull some well i'm gonna put i'm gonna i'm gonna put put all my films together here pretty soon and uh and 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 make them streamable and get on there and um and kind of like narrate because they're all with no sound because it was back in 76 you know before before video really even existed you know so i'm gonna have to get on there and narrate you know my whole film thing of what what's already been released but there's only uh, out of what out of what's been released um there's only been about oh god i don't know maybe maybe 40 minutes of my stuff has may actually made it on on film and I, i've got there's about an hour and a half of stuff that i have but basically maybe 40 minutes of it's all that's ever been shown on film so there's quite a bit of my stuff that hasn't been hasn't been shown yet and then this this new stuff here nobody's ever seen this stuff but it's just me and dean at, at lady lambton's castle but it's it's really cool stuff you know from what i can remember yeah well once uh you get it figured out where you can narrate it and then we'll how we are we gonna like start bringing like uh clips of it on the on yeah the I'll, once i once next i'm gonna take it down there tomorrow and have them uh transpose it and then i'll bring it home and we'll I'll put it on an editor and edit some little clips out and give you a little sneak peek of some of this stuff. And we talked about, you know, going back on some of my stuff that hasn't been shown yet and just kind of like, you know, do a little clips, a little uh, snippets or of, 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 you know, what's coming on my, when I do make it streamable, what, what all's on there and what, you know, you can see. It'd be interesting, you know. Yeah. Yeah. So we got a lot of cool things coming up. We've got, you know, Craig's lost movies, and then we've got some special guests uh coming up and, and some people that we've been working on too. And then we haven't even really started getting any of our guests back that we've had on before. Like I had somebody uh text me uh and say, Hey, we want to get uh Andy Tannis and Joe Crimp back on us. And, you know, there's like a lot of people that are getting requested uh, for some of our old guests to come back on and, and uh, do the podcast again. Uh, Mitch Scooby, he's got some ideas on some things like maybe running some auctions on the podcast and things like that. So a lot of cool things in the future as Craig and I move forward and uh, and we start getting a little bit more organized, uh, things will start getting better. And if we get Oliver Anthony on here, that's going to really boost our subscriptions up and we're going to start getting uh seen a lot more and and that means the uh survivors will start getting more money so that's the other thing we don't like to bug people about donations but they have dropped off and uh matter of fact gene's calling hold on a second gene don't say anything bad about craig you're on the podcast <laughs> oh, oh man! Uh, look here, I'll call you back later. I'm going to tell you about that outboard mechanic. Oh, you you found me an outboard mechanic. My grandson said down there where you live, Winter Haven and St. Cloud is the, the best one down there. He said the guy up here works on his friend works on uh, Yamaha Halls and uh, Evan Roots and stuff like that. He don't work on Mer Mercury's. So he said, okay. oh, "My God," he said, "Right down there where you're at," he said, "It's the best best mechanics on there." Is down in St. Cloud and Winter Haven. Well, I'm I'm just an aircraft mechanic. I don't work on outboard stuff. Hey, you got you got anything good for the podcast? You want to tell us anything good? You want to, got anything you want to share? Um, I just tell everybody that uh, uh, Mark Howard's you know he's in rehab from his leg being taken off, and I talked to him last night, and he's you know he's bummed out all the pain and stuff like that, but he's he's tough. He's gonna hang in there. Everybody pray for him and. Uh, we wish him well, you know. 
uh, and anything else, I, you know, you catch me off guard here. I don't, it's hard for me to do do things two 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 things at one time. I'm trying to drive and trying to think. I'm worse than that damn Joe Biden when it comes to thinking, you know, especially driving. Well, you, I know you got you got uh, a lot of problems with a lot of Yankees getting in front of you over there where you live. So watch Man, out. I'm the only cracker in this town. Yeah, watch out for those Yankees. You know, I know you've had some some issues with them before. All right, Gene. Well, we're, we're, we're going to get you back on here. Priest. I was just talking about people that we need to get back on here. And so, uh, that's, you know, it's pretty cool. See a day in the life of Griff Martin. I get all these great phone calls from all these cool people like Gene and Craig and a lot of people that uh, are famous musicians. So I love my job anyway. Yeah, man, we'll, uh, we'll get together and, and, and find something to talk about. And, uh, Everybody on the podcast, how y'all doing? And, and uh, Craig doing a good job. So is Griff. So y'all just y'all just keep the podcast podding. Is there anything you can share with us about the uh, the twentieth of October? Any updates on that that you can tell us about? Um, <clears throat> yeah, uh, I talked to I talked to Brandon Miller last night, and as some people know, everybody don't know it, but I turned the fundraising thing over the monument to. Brandon, because he wanted he wanted to do he's got a better shot shot at getting the money with those guitar raffle tickets because a lot of the people that told me they were going to donate they didn't and of course I'm not going to mention their name because if I mention the pricks names everybody on the podcast and the and my pages are going to jump on them like a drunk pit bulldog you know uh-huh. so I'm not going to mention their name so anyway can you tell happened. us their initials <laughs> can you tell us their initials. <laughs> no, because if, if I listen, uh, some of them are well to do people, and some of them are pretty good people, and some of them you couldn't trust as far as you could shit straight up, you know. But, you know, <laughs> they gave me the word and all this, and then when they come down to donating the money, they donated nothing. So, uh, but Brandon, uh, uh, wrapping that guitar off, it's, it's going to happen. It's coming together. And so yesterday he called me and said that um, possibly next week, we were going to go, I was going to meet him out there and we were going to build the foundation for the monument. The, the, the granite is in. And so, uh, the guy in South Carolina it, will be working on it and the unveiling will be October the 20th. As, and, and so, uh, we're going to build the foundation for it next week. And, uh, it's coming along. It's going to be great. And uh, I'm going to post on my podcast probably tonight, not my podcast. I ain't got a podcast. What's that wrong with <laughs> On my uh, on, on your my Facebook, page. yeah. I'm gonna probably name a lot of the people that donated five, ten, fifteen dollars, whatever, and the ones. And uh, I'm not gonna mention the the people's names that were gonna donate big money and uh, ain't donated, ain't donated nothing. So um, it's gonna happen. And everybody that wants to be there for the October 20th unveiling, y'all come on because it's gonna be a big event. Dwayne thinks there's gonna be maybe 3,000 that uh, that he kind of knows of. And I went, wow, we. So it's going to be a big deal, you know, and it means a whole lot to me to have this. Uh, it's not only a Ronnie Van Zandt monument. Ronnie's on the one side. That's what I started. And on the back, so- back side of it is the poem I wrote about the plane crash in Mississippi and the, and the survivors. And that poem, this monument is a monument not only to Ronnie, but it's a monument to the responders and the area and the people that came to help us. That's what that poem is all about. And that's why Dwayne wanted that poem on the back of the monument. It's about the airplane crash and what we went through and the the uh, responders coming to help us and the folks in Mississippi. And that's what that monument's all about. And it's going to be unveiled on October 20th. And I'd like to see everybody that's a Skinner fan there. It's going to be a big deal, big day, about three days, 18th, 19th, to the 20th. It's going to be three big days, you know, and uh, uh, everybody that wants to be a part of it, come on out because it's going to be wonderful. And, I, mean, and I, I think you can get a T-shirt with the uh, with a replica of the monu- of the actual uh, stone and the poem, can't you? Uh, I don't know what Brandon Scott, he, he's got a, he's told me last night he had a f- – Go, go fund me thing and selling this raffle tickets for the guitar. So I don't know, but I promise you this, there'll be some out there at the monument for sale to help out. And we're also going to, gosh, I don't know if I should say this at this time, but, um, go ahead. You won't die. 
<laughs> well, we're probably going to take some donations up for Mark Howard because uh, of of him losing his leg. Uh, I'm, we're going to do another thing for him. Uh, I, I was just driving in the car, driving back from the store after I got to talking to, to him on the phone. I'm thinking about going back to the armory and talk to the armory about some days that are available, probably in November. And I think we might put, put do something at the armory for Mark Howard, just for him, you know, help him out for losing his leg. You know, there's no insurance money. There's no, there's no money for him losing his leg. There's nothing but torture and agony for the rest of his life. So I'm probably going to, it won't be no concert, but no loud screaming bands in it. We'll get Bobby Sanders and another another small band and we'll have a dance bring your wife you know bring your husband bring your wife bring your neighbor's wife bring him whatever it's going to be a dance we're going to be able to dance we won't be out there screaming with no screaming rock and roll but we'll have a good a good get together food and we'll do a, something to put together get get marks of money so i'm going to talk with the armory and see what dates are available and you can bring your sweetheart out there and it'll be a it's just going to be a dinner, a dinner and a dance to, to help support Mark Howard. So, OK, well, yeah. we'll we'll get further information on that. You know, <clears throat> before you before you go, Gene, uh, on the last podcast I did with um, Kurt Custer, I told a little story about how we, when you went through the crash, you got thrown underneath the wing and and Billy Powell was outside the wing and you climbed underneath the wing and he kicked you back under the wing. Why did he do that, Gene? Tell, go ahead and tell it. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know where you got that story from. He didn't kick me back up under there, but well, um, I, that's what you told me. You said something about uh, he was about to. You was about. He thought you were going to rip his nose off. <laughs> well, that's because um, when, after they got in, about this is about an hour and a half later. I was up under that plane for an hour and a half, and nobody knew I was up under that wing. I guess I was unconscious with that big hole in my head, whatever. And so um, they got everybody out, and they had set – Gary was sitting, uh, uh, I think, on the wing, and they had got Billy and was setting Billy on the wing, and Billy's nose on the bridge of his nose had been cut, and his nose was kind of like hanging to the side. I didn't see it, of course, but that's what I was told. And um, I obviously crawled out from under there, uh, conscious enough to crawl out – and so Billy saw me crawl crawl out from under the wing, and I kept reaching for him. You know, I would. He said you would pass out, and you would black out, and you'd reach for me, and I'd, I'd push you back. And he said you would black out for a while, and he he so he hollered at uh, Dwayne and some other people or whatever. Hey, here here's Gene under the wing. Come help Gene. And so they run over there and started working on me. But that was like an hour and a half after the crash when they finally found out I was under the damn wing. If you know, luckily I didn't just drop dead under there, you know, or, or they forget about me and leave me under there till the next day, you know. And the, and the damn coons and the possums would have probably come eat me. Maybe the damn coyote or something might have got a hold of my leg, tried to tear my leg off or something. But uh, been a hell of a fight there, I can tell you that right now. But uh, <laughs> Uh, yeah, Billy. Billy said, uh, "I asked him why uh, that he, he kept pushing me back." He said, "I was afraid you was gonna reach up and pull my nose off." <laughs> and I said, well, "Well, you know, it was possible, you know." But he said, "Yeah." He said, "I thought you was gonna grab my nose and pull my nose off because I kept reaching at him, reaching for him." And I was, you know, semi-conscious, unconscious. I, I don't know nothing about that. I know nothing about that. I don't. I don't remember any of that. I only remember about a month later. When I come down off of the Demerol and all that shit they had me on, you know, I don't remember any of that. That's what Billy told me. Well, I kind of, I kind of, you know, uh, wanted to clear that up and get it right from the horse's mouth, you know, because you know how sometimes stories they they grow legs, and so uh, nobody he didn't not that I know <laughs> of because he said you crawled out, crawled partially out under there, and I was reaching for him. I guess I don't know if I recognized him or I was just. You know, trying to get some help or something. You know, I mean, I was unconscious, had this massive hole in my head. And in Mississippi, when they took me to um, to the hospital, they, uh, they were too crowded, and I was too damaged. So the um, the, the uh, National Guard flew me and Alan, I think maybe Gary, maybe Leslie, to Jackson. Uh, Jackson Memorial, that big hospital in Jackson, and that's where I was at. And uh, 
I was there for about a week. And strangest damn thing is that uh, they didn't do nothing for me. I think they thought I was brain dead because of the massive hole in my head. Because when I hit, when I hit, when I went through the fuselage and hit whatever I hit and ended up under the wing, it put a six inch gash in the left side of my head, a massive hole. And so I guess the hillbillies in Mississippi just figured I was brain dead, you know, because they, mm-hmm. they wasn't no help for me. You know, like I say, I was, I was brain dead before I got on the damn plane. <laughs> but they didn't, they didn't do nothing. And so my girlfriend and my ex-wife were out there, you know, and so they, so they arranged to put me on a plane and fly me to Jacksonville. And so um, when I got to Jacksonville, I was on the stretcher, of course. I was still drugged out so bad I didn't know what was anything. And so when the doctors looked at me, they called a plastic surgeon guy, and he came out and looked and, and uh, said, get him into the – uh, or immediately or whatever and so um, when that, this is all I was told all this um, the, they um, got a neuro, 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 neurologist to come in because they were worried about that hole in my head and uh, he looked, checked around and then they, they got me in the hospital whatever and make a long story short he determined that the, the massive hole impact on my head should have killed anybody and they figured I was brain dead and so they didn't do anything in Mississippi and so when my ex-wife and my girlfriend was arguing with them my ex-wife especially about these streaks running up my arm they came in with betadine and wiped that betadine all down on my arm and my burns and my head they wiped it all down with betadine and so that doctor said, man, alive, if they had not, oh, oh, the plastic surgeon said, get him to the OR quick. He had to do plastic surgery work on me to cut the, the gan- he called it gangrious. I think that's the first stage of gangrene in my arm. And he said, if they had to put that betadine on there, when they did, the two and a half hour flight from Mississippi to Jacksonville, he'd had to cut my left arm off because of the gangrene. He said, by them putting that betadine on it when they did, he had enough time to, to t- take that bad skin out. But the two hour difference, I'd lost my arm if they hadn't put that beta down on there. And so I owe my ex wife and my girlfriend that for having them put the beta down on my head and my body, on my arm, burns and my burns and stuff. But I guess they figured I was that massive hole in my head. I was just brain dead. Well, Gene, I, I got a theory of how you might have survived that plane crash, you know, being as how you were in a swamp. Maybe a mosquito that bit Craig landed on you and bit you, and you got a little bit of his blood in you, and that and that and those drugs probably sedated you. <laughs> That's the only thing I could think it. of. Like that mosquito that bit Craig and died over at uh, Allen's house and fell on the floor. <laughs> he was doing twenty six thousand miles an hour for a second to run into that door. You know, after Biden, Craig, he was coked out, and that that mosquito was <laughs> it was it all over. All right, Gene. Well, I'm gonna let you off the hook, man, and uh, we'll we'll talk more about that outboard uh, motor so I can get that thing fixed and get out on. Yeah, the plate. Right, more about this thing from Mark Howard too. All right, Gene. All right. Hey, thanks for calling, and watch out for those Yankees out there, man. And they're they're like buzzers they're everywhere around here you know yeah i know i know but i got on a couple while ago you know yeah i mean you know they they do crazy things like stop in front of you and don't know where they're going and stuff they, 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 the damn speed limit in town is 35 miles an hour these somebody's just running 60 65 miles an hour i don't know where the cops are at you know because there's only <laughs> not many cops around here but there's <clears throat> there's probably 120,000 people in this county and 119,900 of them are damn Yankees. So if and you I see, mean, they, I'm saying that because they're Yankees, uh, I mean, ain't nothing wrong with a, with a, with a you know, people. They just don't know how to drive. Them some bitches don't. And they drive buses up, they ride buses, uh, trains, subways, taxi cabs up there where they live. That they, you know, they come down here and get behind the wheel of a damn car and they ain't got no business well, behind well, you know, the you know, Gene Craig is a Yankee, so you know, be, <laughs> go, go easy. <laughs> Remember what Ronnie used to call him? I know that damn, damn Yankees. I can't believe I got one working for me. 
Yeah. Well, well, if anybody sees anybody uh, on the road that on their <laughs> wind on their rear windshield says "In memory of my memory," then that's Gene Odom. So look out; he'll run over you. I, I, done it. I was at Ace Hardware yesterday, and, and a black a black police officer pulled up, younger guy, you know, and he was his uh, pipe that broke a pipe as plumbing uh, at his. Uh, I think it was at his. Uh, um, water uh soft uh a water treatment thing outside and he showed me on his phone i said man i said yeah, get you this 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 right this take this blue stuff here and i said i can look at it and i said here's what you need to do do this do this do this do this and i says you'll be okay you don't have to get no damn plumber out there and he said man he said can i take your number I, uh, if, if i'm in trouble call you i said sure i said i'll come over and fix it for you if you can't do it if you have a problem i'll, I'll take care of it for you it won't cost you nothing anyway you know and we walked behind the car and he looked at it and he went, damn. He said, look at that. He said, that's the coolest thing I've ever seen. My, my memory says, can, can I take a picture of that? I said, sure. He took a picture of my memory of my memory on, on his phone. And, uh, so <laughs> you you say he's a police officer? Yeah. Yeah, you yeah, need yeah. yeah, you need to get all those guys you can on your side, Gene. It, 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 friend as many as you can. <laughs> well, yeah, certainly. I mean, uh, I mean. I'm a I'm a cop friend of the guy. I don't uh, I don't mess with him, folks. You know? All right, Gene, we're gonna let you go. Craig got to go get his hair cut for his class reunion. You know, he's he's trying to look all clean and everything. And <laughs> still, Craig, has, he, has he looked in the mirror lately? Yeah, <laughs> he posted something the other day about. Who's this guy in the mirror I'm looking at? I don't remember being that old or something like that. Oh, well, he's just kicking his ass. Mine too, but I mean, it's, it, it's speeding up on him. Old age on Greg is uh, is in high gear. But he don't know it though. That's the the cool thing about it. he doesn't even uh, care. You know, you're only as old as you feel. Right. Greg wide open. Greg's Greg's telling me he's 29 again. All right, Gene. Will you be careful and take it easy? All right. All right. Okay. Later. Yeah. Who is that old man staring back at me looking in the mirror? <laughs> yeah. Well, there you heard it from Gene Odom. And so, uh, that, uh, it's always good to hear from Gene and, uh, all right, Craig. Well, we probably ought to go ahead and wrap this up. And so you can go get your hair cut and, uh, get ready for you. Is that, when is that class reunion? Friday. Friday. I, I was, I was with like, Craig at the, at the class, at one of his class reunions. And I can vouch. He was the, the slimmest guy at the class reunion. <laughs> yeah. And he was the highest. <laughs> <laughs> this is actually an alumni <clears throat> class reunion for, for my, for my high school. They have all the years. Basically it's, uh, years right around my mind but uh yeah my my actual real class reunion is october the 21st and i'll be in mississippi so yeah i'm yeah. gonna miss that one it's the first one i've missed in <clears throat> forever i think i think i've been well you one. have like about three different ones though so no not anymore they don't have they have the uh well, uh, now I'm so everybody's so old. We have our our regular 1969 class reunion every every year, but it's we don't have a dinner or nothing. We just go to a meet at a bar. But then they have a another annual class reunion at that for all the classes at this uh, at Picks and Portage Lakes. Every oh, the year. Portage Lake, yeah, Portage Lakes. That's a really cool place yeah. at Portage Lakes. Yeah. Cindy Rutherford puts that on. Yeah. So it kind of reminds me of that Lakeview, uh, like in Kingsport where Zach just played. It's a little bit like that, you know, that's, uh, right on the water. Really cool. All right, Claire, let's wrap it up. man. <clears throat> All right. That's been podcast 97 going toward a hundred coming up here real quick. And, uh, Happy trails to you until we meet again and happy trails to you and, and to keep token until then. And, uh, this has been podcast 97 and may the good Lord take a liking to you and cut. We'll see you next time. Happy trails to you. Uh, 
again Happy trails to you Keep token until then Yeah, the Road Stony Show. <sighs>